it changes everything. For decades, the story of human evolution was a relatively simple timeline. Our ancestors marching out of Africa slowly got smarter, taller, and more like us. First came Homo erectus, then us, Homo sapiens, maybe a few side branches. But the more we dig, the stranger the story gets. And nothing has made that story stranger than a few tiny bones pulled from a cave in the Philippines. Bones that belong to a new species of human ancestor. One that throws everything we thought we knew about our family tree straight into a blender. This is the story of Homo luzonensis, a ghost in the jungle. A mystery that's forcing us to rewrite the history of our own kind. Time, the islands of Southeast Asia were seen as a dead end, a place where hominins might have passed through, but not a place where they evolved. But then, in the 1990s, on the Indonesian island of Flores, scientists found something impossible, a tiny, hobbit-like human ancestor. They called it Homo floresiensis. It stood just over three feet tall, had a shockingly small brain, but was making complex stone tools. This was a species of hominin living on an isolated island, completely cut off, and it was doing its own thing. This proved the islands were evolutionary laboratories, not just stepping stones. So, when a team of researchers started digging in a cave on the island of Luzon in the Philippines, they were ready for a surprise. But nothing could prepare them for what they found. The discovery of Homo luzonensis began back in 2007 in a place called Kalayo Cave. The first find was a single metatarsal, a foot bone. It was clearly from a hominin, but it was just one bone, a tease. The team kept digging. Meticulously, slowly, they uncovered more fossils. By 2011, they had a small collection, a dozen teeth, a few finger and toe bones, and a partial femur. Not a lot to go on. No skull, no brain. Just a handful of fragments representing at least three different individuals. But these few fragments told a wild story. First, the dating. Using a technique called uranium series dating on the teeth, they found the fossils were between 50,000 and 67,000 years ago. This is critical. Why? Because this puts them right in the middle of a massive moment in human history. This is when our own species, Homo sapiens, was already spreading across Asia, heading for Australia. So you had us, big-brained, fully modern Homo sapiens, and at the exact same time, on two different islands, you had two other, totally separate human species. Homo floresiensis on Flores, and now Homo luzonensis on Luzon. This wasn't a linear timeline. This was a crowded, chaotic family reunion. But the most incredible part wasn't the age. It was what those bones actually looked like. When scientists looked closely at the teeth and bones of Homo luzonensis, they were stunned. This wasn't just a variant of Homo erectus or smaller Homo sapiens. This was a bizarre mix of features, a kind of evolutionary Frankenstein's monster. Let's start with the teeth. They were small and simple, but they had a huge pulp cavity inside. This is a mix of traits we haven't seen before. They looked somewhat like the teeth of later hominins, but also had unique features. And then there are the feet. The toe and finger bones had a strong, pronounced curvature. A curve so dramatic, it's a feature we usually only see in a much, much older human ancestor. A hominin 
that lived three million years ago in Africa, called Australopithecus. Now that's a jaw-dropping comparison. Australopithecus was a great ape-like creature that was just starting to walk on two legs. Its curved toes helped it climb trees. It lived millions of years before any form of Homo even existed. So to find a human species living just 50,000 years ago with the same kind of tree-climbing toes? That just shouldn't happen. It's like finding a modern car that still has a crank starter. This is what scientists call mosaic evolution. Different parts of the body evolve at different rates, keeping some primitive traits while gaining new, more advanced ones. And it completely upends the simple straight-line version of our family tree. Instead of a single, ever-advancing march, we're looking at a tangled, bushy family tree. But here's the biggest twist of all, the one that completely changes our understanding of hominin history. Luzon is an island, and for most of the last million years, it was an island. The ocean levels have gone up and down, but it was never connected by a land bridge to mainland Asia. So the only way for Homo luzonensis, or its ancestors, to get there was to cross the water. Now, we used to think that only our species, Homo sapiens, had the brains and the technology to navigate open water. We were the great seafarers. But here is clear evidence that a much earlier hominin got to this island. This implies a level of cognitive ability and planning that we just didn't attribute to these ancient hominins. And the plot thickens. Because back in 2018, just a year before Homo luzonensis was officially announced, scientists found something else on Luzon. At a site called Kalinga, they found stone tools and the butchered bones of a rhinoceros that were 709,000 years old. Seven. Hundred. Nine. Thousand. Years! This means that hominins were on Luzon nearly three quarters of a million years ago which raises a massive question. Who were they? And are they related to Homo luzonensis? Let's do the math. There's a gap of over 600,000 years between the Kalinga tools and the Homo luzonensis fossils. Did Homo luzonensis evolve from those earlier hominins isolated on the island for all that time? Or did the first group go extinct and a second, totally different group arrive later? The truth is, we don't know, but it suggests that the story of human dispersal into Asia isn't a single clean wave. It might be a messy, complicated series of migrations and evolutionary dead ends. So what does Homo luzonensis mean for our family tree? It proves that the genus Homo was far more diverse than we ever imagined. It wasn't just Erectus, then us. It was Erectus, Floresiensis, Luzonensis, maybe others we haven't found yet. All coexisting, all evolving in their own unique ways. And this pushes us to rethink the very definition of a human. We used to define ourselves by our big brains, our fully terrestrial walking style, and our complex tools. But Homo luzonensis had small teeth and may have still been climbing trees. Homo florensis was tiny and had a miniature brain. Both made tools. The boundaries are blurring. The story is becoming more complex. And the mystery of how these unique species evolved on isolated islands is one of the biggest puzzles in science right now. Do you buy this explanation? Or do you think there's more to uncover? Let us know. Homo luzonensis is more than just a new name on a chart. It's a powerful reminder that our past is far from settled. It's a challenge to our assumptions. It's a fossil that forces us to be humble 
and to admit that the story we thought we knew is just a first draft. The discovery of this species, with its strange mix of ancient and modern features, underscores the bushy nature of our family tree. It shows that human evolution isn't a straight line, but a sprawling, tangled bush with countless branches, many of which are now extinct. The story is far from over. As we continue to dig, to date, and to analyze, we will undoubtedly find more ghosts in the record, more unique lineages that challenge what we thought we knew and each one will bring us a little closer to understanding our true and incredibly complex history.